Hi, this is Kinjal here and today we have Jinen Dejia, the co-founder of Drona HQ. He heads the sales and business strategy uh, at Drona HQ. And I'm going to ask him about his very recent um, liking for CRMs. We had a fantastic CRM webinar done by him and I'm going to go deep dive and ask a few more questions on the same. Hi Jinen, how are you today? Hey, thank you very much for having me. So I want to understand Janine, uh, the CRM that you built for Drona HQ recently using the NoCode platform, uh, why did you build, what were you using before that, could you just share some insights on that first? Yeah, it's a good question. So, um, so obviously we were using one uh, CRM earlier and we've been using that CRM since uh, almost 3 to 4 years. Uh, obviously, uh, that CRM itself was uh, not being used uh, completely, but we had uh, to uh, plug in a lot of support modules from Google Sheets and you know various other tools uh, to make it work for us. However, uh, we found uh, you know at, at some point in time uh, we couldn't really uh, do things the way we wanted to do with that particular CRM. And we constantly, like you know, uh, we felt a need of uh, maybe upgrading or or probably building it all by ourselves. So that was one of the primary reasons why we were looking at uh, you know moving out. Um, now just to double click, right? Uh, so we we were using PipeDrive as a CRM earlier, and. Uh, things that were probably not happening in Pipedrive for us was uh, we were not able to append a market qualification uh, I mean like you know uh, the market qualification process and by, by and large which means that every time uh, an SDR team goes and adds uh, uh, a new lead into the system then it had to be assumed it's, it's kind of pre-qualified and that was, that was one thing and not that I'm saying that you know I just couldn't do it. Uh, nobody else could have done it on Five Drive. It's just that we couldn't do it on Five Drive. Uh, that's one. Uh, then next, uh, what we really wanted is uh, you know we wanted the an, an automatic assort, assortment of sorting of our leads mm -hmm. uh, to look like you know we wanted our reps to talk to the most um, hot leads uh, first. So how do we get that logic built? Now again on Five Drive it was pretty rigid. I couldn't, we couldn't have done anything on top of it by you know sorting out my lead spaces uh, and engagement score. So these were some of the difficulties that we were then getting into. Uh, as in how our pricing and business model around like the way we sell our uh, no code platform and our enterprise mobility and you know other tools that we have as in how it got uh, as in how it, it evolved uh, we also found that um, our current CRM was not really in a position where we could like you know adjust things to suit different business uh, models or come out with a you know with a simple pricing calculations and commercial models and so on and so forth so that was uh, yet another scenario where we couldn't really go all the way uh, on pipe drive, and as a result, uh, you know, we we came to a point where we just had to plug in and amend a lot of things outside pipe drive, and that is the point when we started looking out what can we do to fix this particular problem. And nowhere else to look. Look towards your own no code platform. Uh, Yes and no. Uh, actually, we did uh, take a look at Salesforce. Okay. Uh, the idea was very clear that uh, you know we wanted to have a best-in-class uh, tools for uh, you know for the for the sales team at Rona HQ, and uh, obviously Salesforce was uh, one of the contenders. We wanted to do that. Uh, we ran into a few trouble with Salesforce as well. Uh, a is it was uh, not so readily out of the box that I could just pick it up and I and we could do it. Uh, so if you sign up on Salesforce.com and if you go through the entire process, uh, they will actually like you know even the tool would suggest why don't you get connected to a partner. 
Right. Now, uh, that was a limiting factor for us because the moment we start defining our processes and give it to a partner and then they do it, uh, it doesn't work in our business that way. We are very agile, uh, you know, come to think about it, like, you know, we launch every week one or two major uh, features and that has an impact on the way we price, the way we market to our customers and you know overall uh, it will also eventually have impact on the on our toolings right. so we couldn't really like you know uh, keep doing this back and forth with a partner to support us so we wanted something where we have complete uh, control over the tool that we are trying to like you know we are trying to build and uh, yeah so that was one thing also there was an, another interesting thing why we were like you know between pipe drive and between no code uh, we also went pro code actually so we we did have a few developers uh, who actually built an entire lead management system for us okay uh, that was an interesting thing because we again built it like you know um, uh, grounds up from scratch very specific to our need so we had a pro code experience and we had a completely like you know a SaaS experience with Five Drive, a little bit of experience of trying to do things at Salesforce because it's much more. It gives you much more, but it's just that it's that bit more difficult to you know utilize it. So we did all of these things, and then we moved finally to No Code. So okay. here we go. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So tell me some things. Which all other tools or third party uh, connectors have you used, and you know? integrated with your CRM at this moment and I'm, I'm sure you will be evolving sure sure I, I'll take a step back right um, so when the journey with uh, like you know our no code uh, with our CRM uh, when and when we began mm -hmm. right uh, we we did not look at uh, you know boiling the ocean we, we picked up some of the most burning needs okay. while keeping lights on with our existing pipe drive and then we went on to keep adding the other uh, important facets of our CRM that we wanted, uh, which was not being serviced by Pipe Drive. We attacked it first, and you know that was the first thing that we actually came up with. So uh, if you, if you if you will go through my webinar again, mm -hmm. uh, you would see that uh, there was a process of signups. Right, so one of the things that happened in Drona HQ uh, since last uh, four quarters is we opened up our entire tooling for anybody to come sign up and start utilizing it. And while doing that, we had a lot of uh, integrated uh, tools around it. For example, we have Intercom, and then there were a lot of other features. Uh, the Drona HQ platform itself was giving us a lot of information, which was again had to be utilized by the sales team to make their conversations tad bit more smarter and also have insights in terms of whom they should spend their time with. Now um, obviously we did not sunset by bribe on the day one. So we picked up our battery in terms of uh, you know picking up the sign up uh, from website sign up and all the way the market qualification was the first process that we uh, internally broke down our entire sales process into and we picked up this process and we went after it first so in doing that we integrated with intercom we integrated i mean like you know marketing team was also looking for what's happening in the sales that you know we can learn uh, in our marketing uh, uh, like you know for the marketing function for the market qualification and so on and so forth so we we did a two-way integration at that point in time so that was the first thing that we kind of like did now advantage uh, were immediate because my CRM was already doing the job that it was supposed to do and we built this particular sideline uh, activity which was not supported by CRM so CRM plus no code became our first uh, thing that immediately gave us a uh, you know, a nitro booster, right? And that led us to running whatever that we were doing tad bit more efficiently. And that's how our journey kind of began. So we picked, we, we kept lights on, on, on our CRM. Right. We bolted it with a no code. Right. And uh, slowly and, you know, uh, there came needs different times where we had to do a little bit more on this tool. Uh, on the no code, we kept on doing, and that's how, like you know, at one point in time, uh, we completely let go of Pipe Drive, and this was now 
or go to work. Yeah. So you are a very uh, uh, evident uh, or an avid promoter of automations. Sure. I um, I understand. So any particular automations that you have implemented in your part of your sales uh, and sure. your uh, CRM uh, integrated with that process itself. Absolutely, I think any sales organization, if you have to run it like um, in in a, in a you know in the best manner, I believe automation has to be a part of it. So we did a lot of automations in our uh, you know in in our sales process. Thanks to A is adopting to no code because it gave us the entire flexibility that it demanded for, right? So let's take examples. Um, the moment a sales rep or a, you know marketing team or any new lead that comes from no matter which different sources it has to be enriched so uh, that was the first automation that we went for because prior to this uh, we used to spend uh, we used to ask our reps to spend a lot of time in terms of uh, like you know going and collecting this data so there are two parts when you are like you know when you are trying to qualify you are gathering data you are analyzing the data and then you are you know taking some decisions based on should I explain my time yes or no on this now uh, thanks to the enrichment that we could do uh, of course with some third party tools uh, now we are in a position to completely automate the lead qualification scoring process okay. and uh, thanks to that we are kind of saving the reps time in like, you know just talking to the pre-qualified leads now this gives our reps a huge uh, booster in terms of time at hand now they have more time to talk to customers rather than spend time in analyzing whom should they be talking to right, right? so that's an immediate win so likewise we did a lot of other smaller things uh, which could qualify as an automation and I think again like you know and there are yet many other things to do and as the time progresses I think we will be adding a lot more capability to this. So Jinan tell me um, this was completely using no code um, methods and technologies or did you secretly use some coding skills behind your coding skills have really come in use? Uh, <laughs> so that's a good question. Uh, so no code, it was completely built on Drona HP. There's not a single thing that we kind of did outside. And uh, that was a clear cut, uh, uh, even a decision for us because uh, we've experienced, uh, you know, uh, if at all we are going outside and we're doing things, uh, then we are kind of struggling with, you know, in the pro code, in, in the pro code world, is a huge dependency on, doing things with a developer and then his code and the moment you know the developer's code becomes a little bit you know uh, there's an aging effect then changing that code becomes very difficult so it's a conscious conscious decision to stay away from you know from a coding world right but the no code experience did give us a lot of options and uh, within the no code there were some little bit of functions etc that we had to write on top of it for example um, we wanted to give our reps uh, you know a mechanism to uh, see the local time of the customer that they were talking to because we are a global platform we have like you know each rep has a territory which is we are fairly young this company so they have a larger territory to cover and that includes multiple time zones so it becomes imperative for our reps to have a uh, you know real time visibility of uh, the country and the timeline that they are talking to or the time zone that they are talking to and be mindful about that before like you know just go and call them so yeah so you know that little bit we had to like you know add two additional lines of javascript somewhere i wouldn't call it as coding coding but yes if you want to call it yes we did a little bit around there okay and um, so i would also like to understand uh, how much amount of time you would have spent on this Oh, that's a very good question, right? So, okay, so honestly, uh, let's take a step back and see how business applications are kind of, uh, you know, how business applications are eventually commissioned 
uh, by any enterprise be whatever be the size small mid large whichever right i mean um, now the first thing that happens before a single line of code is ever written forget the code ever written but even being architected even before that happens is you need a very crisp understanding of business process yeah. right and you need to document it to the t so that somebody can understand it and then somebody can work on it to give you commercials to give you pricing to give you any estimate of time cost whatever right, right? and unless and until you don't have the document uh, you know you are not going to be having any estimate of what you are looking at building nor will you have a complete picture of what you are trying to make so typically that's how business applications are kind of written right and the entire process of writing a good process document itself can become a very very lengthy process thankfully in our case uh, i was running the sales process so the sales process was kind of there and uh, to be honest we being a very young and you know a uh, time pressed organization uh, all the time commissioning somebody just to write a document to get us a business document was not really top of my priority so what we ended up doing is we actually uh, picked up smaller batches think about it like we in mentally we were wired to think agile so as i said the first process that we went for attacking was not really like in a boiling the ocean and completing a complete crm right. but we picked up a sign up process so what we did is uh, our goal was eventually to wire up an entire lead to order process so when i say lead to order you know sign up becomes a you know right. one of the important element right. to that now uh, then we expanded on this lead to it can be from a website it can come from g2 crowd it can come from any other different sources from wherever we are running our campaigns so lead and all the way to order was our our goal and a lot of things were happening on pipe drive so we just picked up from lead to qualification as my uh, goal number yes. one and to do that uh, you know it took me um, for us to five hours and we we put that particular thing in place and That's interesting yeah pretty much and after that we continue to run business as usual the next day for the reps little bit of training you know uh, from tomorrow we going to have a little bit of change in our process now instead of finding leads straight in your mailbox you're going to find it in an app within uh you know we internally used rona hq as a go to tool for all things business so there is a micro app just go click it and you will find all the leads and then um they go start doing the work as usual and as a next step uh, we realized why not let our sales guys uh like you know complete the communication process and tell us what when when they eventually uh contacted the you know the 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 lead uh, how was their what was the conversation like was was there any learnings that we did not have and it had to be the it had to be there that could be passed on to the product team uh can there be anything from that conversation that can be passed to the marketing team so we picked up small little things we spent another couple of hours and we plugged that in right. so in first four hours we did something from uh, you know sign up process expanded it a little bit to cover all kind of leads and then the next two hours we added a communication or a feedback loop on what we already did and took that feedback and passed it on to different departments so as simple as that that's how we began and then uh, you know as and when the time progressed another couple of hours and the couple of hours we kept adding multiple other things which were necessary all the way up till like you know very recently uh, last week uh, you know we uh, maybe two weeks back we added a functionality of uh, integrating with voice calling mechanism or web dialer and not only that we last week we also made sure that now uh, the web dialer is even giving us information in terms of how many times how many minutes or seconds that they have talked to a customer and this is that we are trying to uh, draw an insight is that particular prospect really 
uh, right late or not. So we, we went on to do a lot of different things. So if you ask me, all put together, we would have spent around maybe uh, you know max max upwards of two two to three weeks to come to this point. Oh, that's fantastic! Actually, that's very surprising. Sure. <laughs> I understand um, you would have stitched it piece by piece and got to the place where you want to go, and probably you are evolving and you would add more pieces to Absolutely. it. Absolutely. So as we speak, uh, you know. Uh, <laughs> Our teams are equally excited because now they are giving us feedback. Can we have this? Can we have that? So now there is a huge backlog on like you know what the team is demanding. In a way, uh, you know, uh, I'm gonna put one person on the job to completely like you know keep building, keep building on top of this because now the backlog is pretty high. We already have an internal little transformation team, so we're just gonna expand on that team. And, hand over this uh, to that team so that they can continue to make more I think primarily this it. is the reason why no code exists in the place because you don't have to create a complete document in the first place mm -hmm. and then you can slowly evolve and you can keep adding things and be agile as you want and I, I, completely, I completely agree with that because uh, the moment you want to define your entire process end to end and by the time somebody will stitch it off into a a working application uh, if that is uh, you know it has a perishable life because the day your business will keep adding more and more things your needs are only going to expand and you know if you're not going to have somebody working on it as a full-time 365 day kind of a thing uh, then obviously like you know you are not going to evolve at that length, at that same speed so I think no code really suits us eternally and we're going to do a lot more on top of it to make sure that you know we are in uh, sync with what our business needs all the time i think that's a fantastic note uh, to take this uh, to the to an end of our podcast today where we understand you are not just talking no code you are implementing it like an example a walking talking example of a no code sure. implementing it internally understanding and reaping the benefits that as you grow, your evolving needs of your business needs will grow. Your change management, your agile processes, everything will come together and you can implement no code in a fantastic way for your business, have your transformations in place. Um, great to have you here, Janem, today uh, on this podcast. And uh, I hope we all gain something on how Janem implemented his um, digital needs of CRM and switching a sales uh, process from lead to order uh, using a good technology. If you have any questions, do feel free to put it us in the comments and give us a feedback on this podcast. Have a nice day, Janelle. Thank you very much.